so guys uh, this will be our first uh, live YouTube uh, session and I hope you can hear me clearly and we have a chat box here if there is some problem during the first few minutes or something because this is like the first live session from our channel if there is something wrong happening like you can text me in the chat box and uh, we can you know start in just a minute so we can I think we can start now uh, our session will be like divided into two parts as we discussed previously like first session will be on the educational aspect and uh, second session will be the analysis of some of the stocks but before we formally begin can i have some responses from you guys uh, if you can just type on the chat box to just let me know if everything is going well and you my sound is audible you can hear me and the screen is fine although there is nothing on the screen yet just the air canada chart we don't have any powerpoint presentations yet for the educational purposes but going forward we can have those as well to facilitate the learning and for the time being it is just you know a can air canada chart being displayed on the streaming so just tell me if it everything is going well so that we can formally start i have received one comment from Mithil. thank you Mithil, for letting me know that it's fine so yep so if i can have like a few more responses like everything is going well then we can formally start okay that's good then thanks everyone sorry and Karthik so let's begin and so, so we will be discussing two things number one is the educational side and the other one will be the technical aspect where we will be discussing like few of the stocks and uh, from the educational side in the our last session which was held on the zoom link and in that we discussed about RSI and we decided that in the next session we are going to discuss the MACD though we had a little introduction of the MACD the moving average conversion and divergence so we decided to you know uh, dig it in more detail in our next session so we'll have a, just a very quick recap of our, of our RSI I just want to know from you guys if you have like practiced this RSI thing during the last week and if you encountered some other questions you can just let me know and uh, we can you know discuss this first if you have some questions and if not then we can move on further with the MACD RSI the most important thing was the levels 30,000 and 70, 30 and 70 if it goes beyond 70 then you have to be very careful and that's not a buying time actually some of the stocks which are you know in the upward direction upward move and then if they make uh, you know if they cross the 70 line then there is a chance that they might fall down and below 30 is a good buy actually but not only based on the technicals you have to see the fundamental aspects to it so might be below 30 because of the, some fundamental reason it's going to bankruptcy or something else okay so someone has, is requesting i think it's from our channel about uh, uh candy uh, candlesticks for new joiners okay in the candlestick uh if i'm getting you guys correctly as uh, some of uh other fellow were also discussing the candlestick thing so are you just uh saying what the name i mean uh how to read this candle a particular red or the green candle or the whole candlestick pattern because if we say about the candlestick pattern that's altogether a different story and it's very in-depth and i'm planning to have you know a separate session on the candlestick pattern uh, like if you guys can recall when we started our session last time we said like we have um, like uh, chart patterns we have candlestick patterns then we have some sort of indicators so we started our journey from indicators and today we'll be covering the second indicator and then we can uh, the next session i'm planning on the candlesticks the candlestick pattern will be discussed in more detail uh, in our next session but today uh, for the someone if uh, is requesting i can tell like what is high what is low and what is the opening price and what is the closing price and the red and the green although we discussed in our last session but for the new joiners i will be doing that so let's begin with our uh, macd first and then i will touch upon uh, this uh, candlestick how to read a single candlestick but for the candlestick pattern that will be our next topic so the macd let's begin our macd thing this MACD is one of the trending indicator 
uh, last time we discussed RSI which was a momentum indicator and now the we are discussing the MACD which is a trend indicator and it's a lagging indicator too uh, since it is based on the past data so we say it a uh, uh, lagging indicator okay so how uh, what it shows is actually the strength the direction and the momentum of a stock price so these three things are you know depicted by the MACD it shows the strength of the price it's a strength of the stock itself where it's strong it's weak momentum and the direction it's going upward direction or it's in the downward trend direction as i said it's a, a trend indicator so it will tell you the direction uh, upward or downward and uh, the components are very important i will tell you the components uh, if we can you know just uh, have a look on the screen yep so the components here the components of a MACD we have like three components of MACD number one is this blue line which is called as the MACD line and the other one is the red line which is called as a signal line and then the third component is this bar chart we call it a histogram so there are three components of uh, of uh, of a MACD: uh, red line, blue line, and the histogram. The blue line is also called as a MACD line, and the red line is called as a signal line. So now, how it is derived? This is actually we we'll focus on this blue line first, and this blue line, which is called the MACD line, it is actually a difference between the two averages to moving averages or say to exponential moving averages when you say exponential moving averages the the short form is ema ema we can call it ema so it is we uh, will be saying you know we will be using the word ema in our discussion so this blue line is actually a difference between two emas of the closing prices plotted over time when we say two emas means two uh, moving averages at of two different points let's say a moving average uh, a one point maybe a 12 last 12 days the other point maybe like last 26 days so the moving averages of these uh, moving averages of like 26 day period and the moving average of 12 day period the difference between these two moving averages is plotted here on this blue line over time so if we plot one difference here, one difference here and move on, then we connect all these points together, we'll, we'll get one line, which is called as this MACD line. So MACD line is nothing but actually it's a difference between the moving averages plotted over time. Okay, that's how we drive this line. So this the mo most important thing to consider here is that this is uh, actually a av moving average line of and not a one period it's a difference between two periods moving average line plotted over time and side by side we have this red line which is called a uh, uh, signal line this red line is actually a moving average of this blue line okay this blue line is, is itself a difference line difference between the two moving averages and then we have this red line this red line is actually a diff uh, a average of the blue line or we can say this is an average of the difference itself so this is also plotted over time along with this blue line this is for the second component and this third component is this histogram histogram we call it a bar chart also and this is actually the zero axis this, if you can see my cursor here this x axis this is currently at the zero line so this is zero axis and the above is positive and the below is the negative number then the height of this histogram height of these bars actually gives you the strength of the uh, strength shows you the strength of the divergence or the convergence as the name says like macd moving average conversion and divergence the moving average i told you that these are these lines are nothing but the moving averages or the difference of the moving averages and then this average of the average or average of the difference of the averages then we say that this is the third uh, component is convergence and divergence okay this convergence and divergence means how converged these two lines are or how diverged these two lines are like we can see here like there is a these are pretty much diverged here there is a there is a divergence the difference between 
the two lines and the convergence if i can show you the convergence like this this is altogether converged or there is actually no difference here and then the slight difference here and these these are like pretty much converged so the difference between two lines is very less here difference is less but here you can see a huge difference and a good difference here and here also the latest one is this is by the way air canada chart so you can see here the good divergence here so this divergence is also shown in the form of a uh, on the form of a graph so this graph if the heights of these bars are high so we call it that this is a, a huge divergence here and then it's going down to mean means convergence is decreasing uh, divergence is decreasing so it is being converged so whenever there is a convergence the uh, momentum is getting weaker the higher the bar charts it means the, uh, there is a huge divergence and the momentum is stronger if you see the latest thing here okay so here if you can see this divergence is a divergence are higher so you can um, but by the way this was the negative at the below side so stock was strongly uh, momentum was strong but uh, strong momentum on the lower side here if you can see this side this we can say that okay this was a divergence and the divergence was strong well, the, the big there was a the big divergence as you can see with these and uh, the heights of the bar which are also showing the same so mean the momentum is strong and the momentum here is upward so upward momentum is strong here the stock has you know shown uh, a huge divergence here okay uh, a, a good strength here of the upward move what happened will with the future of this stock we will be discussing in our next session now next part of this session so macd coming back to macd three components and um, two macd lines red line which is called as a, uh, as a signal line and the blue line called a macd line and then we have the histogram so these are the three components and the definition i told you this is the averages actually so since this is based on the averages of the past data so uh, this is actually a lagging indicator it shows the past trend it doesn't talks about the future it shows about the past uh, like rsi that was a leading indicator because it shows you the future when it moves up 70000 then you can sell okay it might fall down so it was a, a leading indicator unlike rsi a macd is a lagging indicator because it makes use of the past data to depict the trend okay now moving forward how to uh, interpret this so interpretation is uh, very important as back again here so we have two important concepts here number one is the crossover if this blue line crosses over the red line from below or we can say there is a cross up if there is a cross up then this is a good point to buy so here there is a cross up at this point so you don't need to buy exactly at the crossover let this blue line cross a little bit and move upward if it move upward i think that is the uh, good time to buy but sometimes what the people do they who are like uh, more, uh, more risk takers whenever it starts changing its shape for example it came here and the next day let's say the line is still here it has just shown an upward move but it has not yet crossed over it has just changed its shape and this shape is showing that it will now go up and eventually it went up till here and then moved so most of the people will enter from here those who are like uh, uh, risk takers they sometimes enter from here and then eventually it crossed here and then most of the guy which is uh, enter from here which is actually the good point to enter uh, depending upon your risk capacity and then you can see it is it has gone further up if i can relate the price of the stock from the macd if it was here like when it was you know uh, crossing up at this point of time then you can see the price here was 15.12 some some guys will enter from here and the price actually went up but it may happen that it has changed its shape from here and then it had moved further down it didn't cross even like you can see here it changed the shape it went up okay from here and it stopped here for a while it might have come down or you can see here it changed the shape it touched this but it never crossed it fell down so what happened to the stock at this point of time what was the level yeah this level this level the stock didn't move up it actually went down so those guys who are, are trying to enter the position whenever the shape is changed it's not a good idea stock might not go up because the line might not cross it might 
uh, come back again as it happened here. So the good point to enter here is whenever it has actually crossed and it is a cross up. Uh, on the opposite side, they, should, they can be a cross down. It is crossing from above, so you call it cross down. And this is the point where you need to exit the trade as per the MACD. So let's see the stock here. So you can see that from here, it is saying to exit. So you can exit from here and eventually it went down. The stock price went down. So MACD has already indicated to exit the trade from this point in time and you can exit from here so you need to be careful like let it cross down not only because it has just changed the shape to so that you exit it maybe it changed the shape it went down a little bit and then it moved further up okay so just to summarize on the macd three components you need to be careful of the convergence and the divergence the more the divergence the better it is it shows the very strong strength and how to interpret this if it is moving up then uh, it is giving a crossover after you get a crossover this is a good point to enter and on the opposite if it is crossing down after it has already crossed the red line the signal line then at this point you can exit the trade so this will be your trading strategy based on the macd but again macd is not the only thing that you will consider while you plan your trade so along it is just one indicator so one indicator is not you know sufficient so macd coupled with RSI, coupled with the volumes. These are the minimum, minimum requirements that you need to consider along with some other aspects too. And then the candlesticks, which we are going to, you know, discuss in our next session. So these are also, you know, the important factors to consider. So uh, any questions guys, uh, so far on the MACD, you want to discuss something over this? Just let me know if you have some question or how you felt on this. It was good or it added something to your knowledge or something more you want to discuss upon this. Just comment in the box and we can discuss that thing. Okay, please just tell. I just read your message. Please just tell basic of candles, Muzu Khan. Okay, so we will discuss the basics of the candle. Let's wrap up this magnet thing and then we will be discussing the candle things. So, could you also please touch candlesticks for the new joiners? Yeah, sure, we will be discussing that too. Okay. So guys, any comment so far or anything you want to say on the can on this MACD before we move uh, forward? So yes, yeah, Musafan is saying what kind of average we need to consider in this. Uh, this is actually a moving average and uh, that is done by the system itself, by the built-in indicator software. You don't need to calculate yourself. It is already built in and was just discussing the background, how the system or how the software is calculating what is the logic behind that line how these lines are right so you don't, you don't need to consider this like and for 12 and 26 i was about to come on this thing so this 12 and 26 okay uh, like the name suggests here macd 12 26 close 9 so this uh, red line uh, this macd line blue line this is i uh, just uh, i mentioned that this is actually the moving average of the of two points in time for the last two points then we calculate the difference of the moving averages of the two points in time so one is 26 and the other one uh, one is 26 the other one is 12 so we have considered the moving average of the last 12 and the moving average of the 26th period and the moving average of the 12th period so we have calculated the difference between these two averages and have plotted it here over a period of time so when we calculate the difference we will get a number so we this number is here you put a dot here then we another another dot another dot and then we join all these dots so we get a line so this difference of the last 26 day period and the 12 day period is plotted over a period of time and then we join all these points we will get a line so that call uh, that line is called a macd line for the last two uh, to moving averages of the closing prices and this line this number nine is actually the nine day period as depicted by your 
red line so the red line is actually the moving average of this blue line and the period considered is 9 you can change uh, this also in the format but uh, it's better to use uh, stick with the same which because it is mostly used and this how this is done this is the last 26 day 12 day period average difference between those two and the red line is actually the the average of the 9 day period based on the blue line so that's how we calculate this but this is built in the system if you want to change this you can change you can go here in the format and you can change the length the fast length period and the short length period and the signal length period but it's better to stick with here stick with the same because these are more commonly and widely used but you have a choice if you want to change it you can okay i hope that answers your question Khan. just let me know if it is clear or i can elaborate this further to you okay yeah aditya is saying what timelines do we use in vector what timelines timelines means uh, what do you mean by the timelines you want to s you're talking about these periods 26 12 and the 9 or you have some other question can you just little elaborate if you have question on this i just explain or if you have some other question you can just type in here so i can answer that Vocals is here informative thank you couldn't please share the example where we use rsi and make it together yes we will be covering it uh, shortly where we are going to discuss about uh, some different stocks and on that stocks we will apply these to rsi and the macd and then you can have a package application here just wait for a while and then we'll go to that uh, that section uh, because for example both indicators are showing up by time in this one we will be covering uh, the ac thing right now so i can tell you in more detail so based on the macd yes and the weights on the rsi it's an upward direction so these two indicators are saying that it's good to enter in this trade but uh, again this is not the only thing we're gonna consider uh, by the way the volumes are also high the third thing is also is good you can see the high volume but then we have another thing when to enter the trade the support and the resistance we will covering the support and the resistance topic shortly when we are going to discuss some of the stocks including air canada okay so aditya do we always consider the same number for all stocks yes we consider the same number for all stocks this is a built-in pattern we use the same so, uh, so what should be the moving average values for day trading day trading moving averages for macd uh, i normally do not do day trade so i don't have a very good idea on this but moving averages remains the same uh, because you're gonna change the time frame in the daily when you're going to see that this daily uh, and you're going to do the day trading so in the time frame of the chart you will not consider one day like this one is like one day right now so you will convert this on a one minute chart or five minute chart when you convert this five minute chart and then we when we apply this macd you see the macd shape has been changed so the macd numbers which have been taken are actually now the same period so period does not mean uh, day here 26 and the 12 does not mean last 26 days and the last 12 days last 26 periods and the last 12 periods so the what is the period in this example now is every five minute what is the chart is a five minute chart so every five minute is one period are you getting this so every five minute is one period so period will correspond to this uh, time frame uh, otherwise you know uh, you, this macd shape would have remained the same this macd shape has changed because we have changed the period so you will keep this same you don't have to change anything in this 26 12 or 9 you just need to change the time frame essentially like when you do the day trading you use this five minutes one minute five fifteen minutes or even shorter time frame and uh, when you apply the macd the macd data that will be picked up will be based on the last periods last 26 period 12 period and the 9th period so that period does not mean the day that period means that uh, corresponds to the time frame which you are using so if you are using five minutes so the last uh, each five minute interval is one period i hope that answers you uh okay so uh, okay do we all consider the numbers fine 
Saurabh, MACD and RSI when checked for 15 days sometimes shows overbought but when you zoomed one day period it shows different. Yes, it happens. So whenever you have to trade, you have to uh, look at the bigger picture too. So it's for the one day period, it might say you indicator is saying, okay, buy. It's a buy trend. But if you go back and look at the one week trend or two weeks or one month, then it is not showing you the, the same result. So the analysis for one day and two day will be different. So one day analysis, those who are doing just one day analysis means they are holding it just for one day or max for two or three days, not over a week period. If you are holding something, you're doing a swing trade over a week, then you have to see over a week time. So whenever you have to buy, take any decision, don't take it and you are like a swing trader. So you don't only rely on one day. You have to look at the bigger picture also if you have to hold it big at least like over, over a week so along with the one day because one day chart you will see you will use to see when to enter and when to exit and over the long run if you are holding uh, by the long run here I'm, I'm saying that if you are even holding for a week so check the weekly trend too before you enter and it will give you a diff it might give you you know a different answer if you see uh, on the weekly basis or you see even a monthly basis like for example if someone is trying to hold the stock for a very long term one year so he will not you know be bothered by the daily movements he will be bothered about the movement over the months over the quarters or over the over the year so if he's going to hold anything over a year or so. So so it goes with the guys who are doing the weekly trends, like who normally have the TFS account, they do the swing trade, not the day trading. So those guys uh, are, you know, uh, must use uh, weekly and the monthly charts to see how the stock looks like or how the stock is behaving over monthly or over the weekly basis along with the daily chart because the daily chart you're gonna use to see which day to enter and then for example you are today seems to be a very good day to enter uh, to buy a stock the stock is down or the market is down so that seems to be a good buying day and then within that day what we do we open a hourly chart to see which point in time during the day the stock seems to be or is expected to be lower so that we can enter the same formula applies on the other side also you go up side on the left okay i hope that answers you if you have some other thing or you want to add something uh, you can just comment on the box here so i'll reply to that okay so uh, welcome aditya mozak khan okay good thank you so what should we consider for swing trading what should we consider uh, yes or for the swing trading uh, at least weekly day is like day a uh, daily pattern you need to see like on which day it is being expected to go down if you it is going in a downward trend so you can you know expect okay it can go down and then we wait for that point that day of the week so that you can enter and then uh, you need to see for the swing trade at least weekly also monthly is also good because sometimes you need to hold for a month so you can so weekly is highly recommended and uh, monthly is also recommended too for the same trades and the daily is it goes without saying for the daily okay thank you Saurabh Imran uh, could not understand one basic thing in your chart it shows different time intervals of five one hour one day. what does these time interval means okay these time intervals are these are the actually options which options you can use like you can have this chart over a one hour period or a one day period one month or one day or even in the minutes in the hours anything like normally we you when you will you know open this chart you just stay here on the one day so these all the candles these each candle represents one day so you can analyze the chart on the daily basis or you can analyze the chart on a monthly basis it's one month this is one hour one day and then this is like five minutes so each candle is formed after every five minutes so this is the inter five minute interval so in our our analysis we do on a one day chart unless you're doing a day trading so you go with in one hour 15 minutes one minutes the one day chart is a good idea to discuss so we'll be sticking on one day and just uh, i mentioned like you're doing a swing trade so better to see one week movement and one month movement too to get a bigger picture hope that answers you man okay so i think now we can move on next uh, okay guys with regards to the timing we uh, will you know try to you know make it till one hour to one and a half okay and we'll try not to exceed one and a half hour because 
uh, most of the guys have different time zones and it's like night over there uh, so we'll stick to one and a half not more than that okay one to one and a half wherever it suits so this is done from from the educational aspect and uh, the next uh, session will be on the candlestick patterns what the candlestick shows how this candlestick uh, you know uh, displays the information and all that so that will be our next day educational topic and before moving that uh, i just want to cover one small thing on the candlestick what is the candlestick okay this candlestick is actually it's, i will focus on this candlestick here let me zoom it so everyone can have a look so this candlestick what it's only for those who have just joined today a basic thing otherwise we have discussed in our last session, last session so this candlestick this is like we have two different uh, sticks red one and the green one the red one shows the upward movement the, uh, the red one shows the upward movement and the green one shows the downward movement you can have like different colors black and the white also but we are using this color uh, i think default is red and the black but and some of the sites you will find the green and the red too so green is upward shows the upward stock movement and it shows the downward stock movement so this whole the green rectangular box this is called the body of the candle okay and these are these sticks up which are up and down the downward is a small one here is the big one so these sticks we call it the wick this is upward wick this is the downward wick so this one shows this upward wick shows if you can see the price here 34.59 this was the highest price on this day this is the this day is like uh third sixth of uh i think this is third third of june of 2020 and on that day air canada stock made a high of uh, or that mm, made a high of 34.59 okay this was like i think that i think that was march so march on in march on march 6th yeah that was 34 was the highest on that day and the lowest was the lowest week the low point was 30 okay and that's what the week shows and the opening is here this point this is the open price and this is the closing price on that day the open price was 31.11 and the closing price on that day was 33 so it opened at 31 okay then it made a low of during that day 30.89 then it made a high of 34 but eventually closed at 33 so that's how we read this and on the red side let's talk about this candle if i can get a wick here okay this one so this one is a red candle it was open here now opening will be on the higher side 25 it opened at 25 made a high of 27 made a low of 21 and the cl it closed at 25.45 the closing is on the downside in the red one and the green one the closing on the upper side so if you need to discuss further you can ask if someone has that particular question um, okay so that was a small candle see how to read a candle up low um, opening closing up and down so that's fine now we are going to discuss uh, the different uh, different stocks so let's begin with the, any of the stock that you want to recommend air canada is the first one i think it's already open so that and we are like very much interested in, in air canada so i will be discussing air canada first and the next stock will be of your choice so you can comment in the chat box and just let me know which next stock you want to discuss in the meanwhile i will start with air canada and then we'll move on to the next one of your choice okay so the air canada it was open here for a very long time so you can see here if we talk about the rsi the rsi let me remove this these ones this these lines here okay so the rsi is in upward direction so i told you that if it is above 50 so above 50 uh, any uh, the line above 50 shows you the upward trend and the line below 50 shows you the downward trend so it is above 50 it is an upward trend and the shape you can see the shape it's like it is sharply inclined so the, it's, it's an upward move it is a bullet it is bullish in nature for the time being so it's uh it's it's depicting uh, a buy signal at this point of time based on rsi well it is in upward direction number one number two the shape is sharply upward so this is bullish in nature so and the macd macd you can see there the divergence the blue line is uh, already up it's above the red line which is number one number two you can see the divergence it is diverged here it was a convergence and then it changed shape from here so it is diverse in nature 
and uh, the histogram is also showing the divergence and it is the increasing trend of divergence so you this is important thing to note here also it was a uh, if this uh, chart if you can see this bar this was like here it was increasing trend it moved till here and then it fell down so now here it is in upward trend if the next day on monday if it moves like up so it will like further strengthen this uh, trend okay so it can go further up uh, currently this uh, macd is a lagging indicator it shows you the past trend based on the past trend macd is saying that it is you know it's good to buy this stock because of the upward trend and the increasing momentum in this stock so uh, macd is positive rsi is positive the volumes are you can see the volumes are ever increasing like for the last three days the four days if you consider this these three days they were uh, some, you know the constant volumes based on the average it was traded averagely and in the last three days the volumes are like higher and they stood above average and each day volume is higher than the previous day volume so volume is volume uh, trend is also positive now these are the three things which are positive but uh, that's not all so let's talk about the trend analysis so if you talk about the trend analysis then we draw one resistance line which is very important to draw here so you can see that this stock if I take this upper big here this one and change the color to red and make it bold so it is visible so this is the resistance line and let me make a support line too if I make a support here it can take and let's change it to light to green or blue one okay so currently this stock was you know uh, closed at 20.29 but the immediate resistance which is facing is 22.89 it closed at 20 and 22.89 is the immediate resistance it can resist at this point in time uh, those who were following this Air Canada, they must have noticed that what happened to this stock. It made a high of 22.50. Exactly, I don't know the exact number of what it made. It, uh, on the graph, it will go till like 20.53 or 5. The exact number was 22.50. So it made a high of 22.50, but it was not able to break that high. It, it touched only one time, 22.5, but it never crossed 22.5 again. It didn't came even closer to that and after that it went down 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 and uh, took a support at 20 point uh, day support on that day it made a low of 20.09 and then it gave a closing at 20.29 so it shows that there is a resistance at this level so if i come back and do a back testing so and on this day also on like 29th of april also it touched at this point but it couldn't sustain the next day candle was a red candle it went down and down down until it moved here it stayed for a while here consolidated for a very little while and then move further down to uh you know a very lowest level of 12 uh, of 12 you know it gave a closing around made a wick of 12.78 on any per on that particular day and here also it approached to this level okay and then stayed there for two days and made a downward journey here also at this point okay they, it didn't stay here but uh, so it is not very important to discuss this but still it is touching at this point um, but important trend is here this point and this point and again we are at the same level so this is very crucial level and very important and guys this is dangerous too those guys like who are like planning to enter in this stock just hold on for a while like i have been seeing the comments in the in our video uh, not the video in our uh, in the group like people were saying is it good to buy or is it good to enter at AC right now so my comment on that is to wait because now it is like at this level and you need to see whether it crosses this resistance if it may if if it crosses this resistance level and uh, uh, makes a candle above this I mean the closing price is above 22.89 on Monday if it closes above this point then we can say okay yes it has crossed its resistance and there's a chance that it will go further up but on the other side if it does not cross if 
if the closing is less than 22.89 then i think it will start its downward journey from here as depicted by this trend which happened you know last time too so this is very important to see the movement on monday uh, i'm not talking about the high if it makes high of of maybe 23 that's not important it can make a high of maybe 24 but the good thing is the important thing is where it closes if it make a high of 24 but it closes like below 22.89 then it will not be considered a breakout of resistance so you need to wait for the breakout if it breaks out it's very good for this and it will go further up but if it doesn't breaks out then you have to wait and then you see where it stops then we have a stop here a uh, support level it, then you might find this stock trading around 17.78 to 18 at this level it can stop here and then start its upward journey again or it might you know take another support have here at the second level we call it the second support let's draw a line here this will be an s2 uh, support level 2 and the third support level will be further below this this normally it's not expected to go to that level and most important is the s1 and then the s2 s3 normally you will not find because stock will not go so down so the first support level is around 7.78 second second one is around 16 so you can find the stock trading around 17 if it makes a downward journey so wait and watch for this talk now if we come again here talk about the volumes and this one and this one I told you this one is the lagging indicator it gives you a past trend so if it goes down tomorrow I mean on the next session Monday it goes down then you will find this the shape of this one will be changed and shape of this will start diverging okay so this support and resistance level which is a trend the trend is very important and trend is your friend so don't go against the trend so uh, I will not recommend entering in this trade right now wait and see how it behaves on Monday and then you can plan your trade so anything you want to say about this stock or you want to tell me something uh, you want to share something and regarding the news okay uh, the meanwhile you guys can comment here and I will share some news about this like and someone who has yeah, I think recently shared link also most of guys you have uh, gone through that that it has already raised some you know uh, some share some funding based on you know uh, issuing the for the shares and issuing the convertible debentures by the way those who don't know convertible debentures are like a form of raising the money from the market and that's a form of a loan in the beginning and then they, there is an option at the um, there's an option at the, with the holder of that debenture that that can be uh, you know converted subsequently into shares if you want to you know buy the shares of the Canada of Air Canada so it has actually raised money on that from by issuing the convertible ventures and the shares so the company has got funds but the other some people are saying that it might go down people might not be traveling uh, for next two three years that is very long term in my perspective but if someone is doing a swing trade I don't think you need to worry about that because when this Canada uh, Airlines operations will open, you might see a small increase. And if you talk about a bigger picture, a very long term investment, two, three years, you might consider that aspect. But for the swing trades, you will see that it will keep on keep on swinging. Mm, if they, they have got, um, you know, some more funds that will be invested and that, you know, that can uh, help to run the business. So profits might go up. Someone saying that revenue might go down, people might not be traveling the cost will also go down but the, not exactly in the same percentage so let's see how it moves but for the swing trade uh, you don't need to worry about that uh, thing that revenues might not come back for the next two three years for the long term perspective yes it is an important factor to consider but the long term trend will be set up after like few months when we will see the uh, uh, airlines operating well and the next financial results are up so if you are like worried so let's wait and not invest for a very long period but swing trades yes you can you can do so i have been receiving some of the things that you want to discuss some stocks and uh, muzu khan okay you are saying uh, draw resistance and support line that okay we have covered this previously but if you want a more in more detail we i can upload a separate video on this for the right now support you can see the point where it touches the maximum number of times it takes a support and the resistance is the 
the point where again it has you know act as a ceiling and protected the stock prevented the stock from going above that level and it has been tested several times i can upload a separate video on this okay uh, then uh, let's move on to the anything guys you want to share on the air candle stock you can just comment in here and then we will keep on moving with the next one next one next one next one let's start with hr On about this, this is something else. Okay, okay, guys, coming to this one. Okay, this stock. Uh, has shown an upward movement till here and if you draw a resistance line here so it is facing you can see there is no resistance till here it isn't there was a resistance here it has already broke its resistance it, is, it has already crossed up and i cannot see any further resistance here in this picture let's go back and do a back testing if it was Till 2018, I couldn't find 17. Also, we have gone enough back for like four or five years. Don't need to go so much, need, need not to go too much back here. Let's come back and make a reset again. So, guys, there was a resistance at this level of 10.81, which uh, the stock has already broke. And uh, okay, it has gone up and gave a closing above this resistance level, which seems to be good actually. So it is, uh, you know, we can say that it has crossed the resistance and it can go up further. And the support level, let's draw the support level two here. If we talk about the support, we can see, consider this level as a support. Let's change the color to blue. Okay, the support level, the downside of this stock is 9.6 and the upside is there is nothing. Well, with this trend for short time, it might, you know, face a small hindrance i will not say a resistance because for resistance there should be at least two points to meet so at 11 previously it touched this 11 high 11.61 but it you know didn't sustain on that day but it's not a resistance because for resistance to happen it should be like at least two points uh, to meet to consider and then we can call it a resistance this is not a resistance though and you can see a stock moving up and it uh, never stopped at any point here till like the upside is like so high till 20 so you can expect that the next uh, resistance level to be 20.51 for this stock the next coming resistance in the below it but it will not like go straight up in a straight line to 20 it will like you know go up slightly down take some correction and then you know slowly and gradually it can move up in a wave yeah, that's how the market moves so uh, if i'm saying that it can go up to 20 but uh, it doesn't mean that it will go up in a week time it will take some time but eventually yes it's like there is nothing that's gonna stop the stock to move up to 20 unless there is very bad news related to this because uh, if there is a news then all technical analysis that just fail and then follow the trend is of the news so you need you will follow the news trend so uh, keeping everything constant this stock seems to be in upward direction and seems to be good and rsi is also in the upward direction above 50 and in a steep incline and positive in nature bullish in nature rsi is positive showing an upward and the macd line is above you know the signal above the signal line blue line is above which is positive and the convergence has you know has started to increase as we can, as you can see the Instagram, the strength is increasing and you can see the above strength and guys uh, uh, check this stock on Monday if it's Monday the closing is above the trend will be confirmed although trend has already confirmed like because the closing price above the resistance line sometimes there is a false breakout so if it is uh, going down on Monday and gives a, gives a closing below 11.28 then you need to wait a little more but uh, in 
you know, based on the technical analysis, like it, it seems that it will go up because it has already crossed it. So RSI is positive, this one positive. The only thing that I'm considering is like the volume. The volume is still below average, but it is, you know, more than the previous day. So this one more low than higher than the previous one. And the only thing that is like kind of important to consider here is like maybe uh, a uh, very important thing to consider like the volumes are currently not being supported because the volumes are low volumes are here above the average here the volume is below the average so monday better to see how the this stock is trading on monday before you enter into a trade i hope that answers you um, and we'll help you to analyze the stock on monday well, the only thing to check on monday is the volume how the volumes are responding keeping other things the same Okay, so next stock that we're gonna pick up is SCL. SCL, my God, SCL, what SCL did on last session? I think like a 70% jump or something, even more. SCL again, SCL Shocker. Shocker, okay, Shocker was in a very, very long consolidation phase. You know, the guys, uh, I told you in the last session, the longer the consolidation phase, the stronger the strength it is, stronger the momentum it is whenever it breaks out. So it broke out the, you know, the consolidation phase and you can see one from 1.7, the closing price of 2.08, from 2.08 to 3.55, tremendous, a huge one. So, and with, uh, you know, a downward price rejection, downward price rejection that it was not, you know, coming down it made a low and then you know it kept on increasing 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 and there is no upward price rejection means there is no upward wick here so it kept on just increasing like anything and volumes were so high more uh, like more than you know volumes in, in any of the preceding day for a very long time here okay and important thing here to note is like as expected the rsi has crossed 70 so it it might fall, uh, fall down on this level now most of the people will, will start doing shorting here. They will do the short. They will do a short sell and then it will bring the uh, this line down. So those guys who have already who already own this stock, many of you have must, must have already sold it. But if you are still carrying it, just see the price move on Monday. If Monday it is starting its downward journey, exit the trade because of the RSI. RSI can fall down and you will see many of the short sellers coming into the market. So SCL is uh, for me not a good buy on Monday given its downward trend. If it is still getting its upward trend, then you can, you know, enter but very, you know, it, it will be risky. So you need to enter and then watch closely. If it is going down, sell it and exit the trade. It can be good for the day trading from the short selling point of view or the buy from the long position point of view but for the swing trade if you are trying planning to hold it for a week or so it might not be a good idea because of rsi rsi has gone up uh, across 50 and this one is uh, in bullish in nature um, because this is showing that you the past uh, trend and on monday based on the rsi it can fall down if it falls down then you will see the divergence here um, on the MACD line too. So Monday session is very important for SCL. And if I see, you know, uh, the resistance, there is no resistance here till 8.37 in the longer run, you know, it can go up, but we cannot make any prediction based on just on one day trading because it was uh, in a consolidation phase very for a very, very long time. And it has, you know, moved up and they gave, um, they, we have only one day of the upward trend so we cannot say anything that this upward trend will sustain or not because in order to have a trend we need to have some more sessions some more candles to you know to make a, our prediction to set the trend to check the trend or to comment anything on that on one day you cannot comment anything maybe like on the next day you will see it start falling down and come again down at the same level or stay something here above because now the support level will be this one we can draw a support though um, support level will be like this one it will seek a support at this level so if you see uh, the stock coming down it will take a support at 2.3 and although the upward side is very high at this level but it is not very important now to consider this upward trend and see the uh, if we say that okay the resistance level is very high it will eventually go to 8.6 in order to comment on this we need to have some more uh, trading sessions and to check 
how it is behaving in the upcoming days uh, and then we can say anything so if you are already holding it keep a very close watch on monday if you have not entered uh, then it's not recommended to enter if it is it have if it has already started its downward journey given you are uh, planning to buy if you're planning to sell a downward journey you can you do a short selling it can be considered for that okay so the next one we will go for expa sort of Expa was also, you know, a very long consolidation. Then it made a small move up, it's consolidated again. Then we have a big move in the upward direction. But the important thing here to note is the downward price ejection. But the closing is, uh, it has formed a red candle. It was like a gap up opening, but the closing is like below that opening price. Although it closed, you know, it's very important to analyze this trend here like it closed on the previous session before this session it closed on 1.93 okay and then made a gap up opening of 2.8 but it couldn't sustain this is very important it made a gap up of 2.8 but it was not able to sustain that opening price of that day and it closed at 2.4 what does that mean that the investors don't have any more confidence in that uh, as compared to the confidence which was there at the beginning of the day in the morning in the morning it, there was a huge confidence like yeah it will go up because the guys who have bought this price uh, bought at 12.8 they were expecting it of course to go up but uh, when the trading began during the day based on the fluctuations it uh, started a downward journey and closed at 2.3 so the conf there was you know not much confidence of the traders on during that session so it was not able to sustain this price so and it has like started maybe a downward journey so it can be very important it or it is very important to see you know the movement on monday and volumes are also low as i told you that investors started losing confidence in this and it was not able to sustain its opening price and although this candle is above the previous candle the previous close was 1.9 and the close here is 2.4 2.3 Although it, it, was, it has closed above the last day trading session, but it is closed below the opening price. That's why the candle is red. So it has closed below the opening price, which says the opening, it was not able to sustain its opening uh, price and it never went up. It opened up, you know, 2.8 and it went a very little like 2.89 or we can round it to 2.9. Open in 2.8, went to 2.9, just 2.9. And then went down, 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 down till here 2.02 and made a uh, closing a little above like 2.4. So it seems it remained in the downward trend on that day. If it, it opens here and you know doesn't make any upper wig, a higher wig, and goes down, so this candle, the pattern of this candle shows that the stock remain in the downward trend on this day and it may continue its downward trend the volume because volumes were also low and you know see the rsi shape the rsi shape was you know since this day since this day it was you know on the on the higher side and the is for number one it is above 70 so correction is due number two the shape was you know see the shape rsi shape just let me zoom it the shape was inclined then shape has you know slightly tilted so it can be moving down in the next session so it's not advisable to enter in this stock number one because it was not able to sustain this price the opening price made a lower closing price volumes low number two rsi above 70 also the rsi shape has started to change like here the shape change it was it just became flat here it didn't become flat but it has you know tilted towards down so you can see if it has tilted down it will go it will go for the down and this one is currently is up uh, MACD is currently an upward very steep high upward but uh, if the stocks goes down you will see the shape will be will be changing on this on the MACD level so it's not a good time to enter in this if you already have a stock and you are holding it and if you see in the first 15-20 uh, minutes or like maximum one hour trade on the Monday morning you or if you do the pre-market data it's very important to look at the stock in the pre-market the pre-market the price is down 
so you just need to exit the trade immediately on this because it is expected to go down based on the volumes rsi and the shape of the candle and the trend which it followed on the last session I, uh, by the way the same happened with the air canada also air canada also was not able to make a big uh, upper wick and then went down so it and also it's air canada uh, you know in addition that was at its resistance level too so air canada is uh, you know looking dangerous although i i'm also trading in that and i don't want to this stock to go down but uh, it it doesn't go with your wish so it's market it can go down but it can eventually come up again okay so guys uh, the, uh, i have discussed the spa and uh, so far how is it going are you trying to understand are you understanding this just let me know and uh, Pankaj is saying news for Xbox seems to be positive airports opening up so should there be considered that should be considered too but that has already cashed so that price opening up when the price comes everyone you know joins the party they come in so that news was already broke and you know people enjoyed here people enjoyed on this day too that's why it gave uh, you know a uh, gap up a huge gap up opening look here to 1.92 2.8 a huge gap of opening of approximately 0.9 dollars uh, so that and then it, it was not able to sustain if there is any further news apart from the news which has already been in cash or the impact has already been you know uh, included in this if there is any further news then you can see upward if there is no new news then you know it might not be uh, you know a good time to enter maybe so if there is a if there is a new news coming in that can be factored but the previous news will not have any further impact on this or even if you impact let me like take it the other way if even if impact the momentum will be very very less so if you enter in this you will the upward room will be very less but the downward will be uh, you know a much more space to go down so if you talk about the risk to reward ratio the reward will be i'm just considering like the this news factor will be still in the market and people will be coming in just impacting that so even if that impacts it will impact a little so the upside the reward will be less but the downside is more so the, what is the downside the, this is the downside here so the downside is more so risk is more this is the downside so upper side if it goes up from here at the point at any point of time it stays up but the impact will be less so risk is more and the reward is less so this reward issue doesn't satisfy here unless there is a new news that can be factored in the previous news is already in case i hope that answers you okay yeah welcome okay now okay so guys so uh, we have like 21 watching and the six likes if you are liking this video just press the button so i can have like some sort of feedback from you guys so you know it keeps the ball rolling and thank you very much for the guys who have already liked this and the other guys if you are liking this video or if it is adding some value some information to you it is helpful then do like and comment so i can get some sort of feedback and that will be a great motivation for me and thanks for those who have already did that uh, we have discussed expa and we have other comments on c and q nvda let's go nvda first nvda nvda you are talking about this one nasdaq and or uh, we have i guess you will be talking about nvda okay this one I hope uh, I have opened the right one. Uh, so Khan, if it is Vakas, uh, I think it's Vakas. If it is not the correct one, just tell me so I can change it. But I hope you are talking about this one, 356. I show you are on this one. Vakas. Okay. Vakas, so if you will confirm this, I will start this. But in the meanwhile, I'm going moving to the next one. So just confirm so that I can start. I will come back again to your stock. Uh, I'm moving to the next one 
so next one let me pick up from the chat box C and Q, Sankar, MGM, then we have Enbridge, BNS, LB, Muzuf, I will be coming back shortly to your stocks. Let me take some other stocks of uh, Franklin uh, and Bridge. And okay. Enbridge Incorporation, New York stock, or uh, I think. Guys, if you put in the ticker, that will helpful. Okay, so you want this New York one or the Canada one? Can you, Franklin? Can you just confirm to me with the ticker so I can move it? So I will move, switching it to BNS. Okay, BNS. Okay, BNS. BN. Yes, BNS seems to be currently at its resistance level. This is the resistance level for the BNS, and let me draw the support level to the support level. It can take a support from here. Let me change the color to blue. This is the support, and this is the resistance. And uh, it, this is currently at its resistance level, and you can see. You see if I can zoom it in you can see the upward price rejection this upward price rejection is dangerous you know it touched at this uh, uh, 62 level and then it was not able to sustain at that point and it closed even below its opening price so it indicates a downward trend point number one it uh, made a high of 62 but it was not able to sustain point number two it made a red candle means it was not even able to sustain it is the opening price and by the way it made a gap up opening it, made, it was closed on the previous day on the 59 but opened on the last session at 60.9 it was a gap up opening but it was not able to sustain it so it has come down so they and the candle is red with uh, upward uh, price rejection and the candlestick pattern i'm not taking the exact name here so most guys really confused with this sort of candle whenever it forms it is it, it depicts the downward trend so the ne in the next session you will find this stock going down because number one it has touched its resistance level it has formed a red candle up with the upward price rejection so there's a chance for this stock to go down though rsi is still you know bullish in nature same goes with the macd but the macd if we see that the uh, you know it has started coming down from here it went down this gram and it stayed constant at this level so the upward trend has seems to be finished see it was there was the upward trend here that and a consolidation and then after consolidation it can after the solution, there are two options either go up or go down but the, uh, going down is uh, you know seems uh, more visible because of this resistance level and the upward price rejection so you will see these histogram histogram charts to uh, histogram bars to come down if this histogram is, is coming down it is showing the uh, convergence so you will see that this shape ought to be converged here so it's easy to you know see from the bars uh, rather than taking major you cannot measure a gap from here unless it is very obvious so here it is not obvious but here it's like constant and it can fall down because of the other indicators which are telling us and also the volumes are less below average volumes in the last these trading days till here it was above average then falling down falling down and and volumes are less and also they are below their average volumes for the preceding days for the last 20 day volume we, here we are considering the volume for the last 20 days so the last 20 day volume volumes are lesser so not a good buy and uh, we're depict, uh, depicting a downward trend you can see the stock can you know resist here for a while at 50.69 so uh, 56 actually yeah 56.69 so 55 to 56 you can see the stock coming down to this level or uh, in for a few days it can you know stop here but this at this uh, point it will be a good buy because most of the time it touched here so this point at 57 also uh, let me draw a line here also it can also be considered as a support but uh, it's better to wait for the next level this line
So this line can also act as a support. So 55 to 57 will be a good buy for this. So I think the reasonable price to buy this stock. Okay, so at this current price, uh, don't enter it. Okay. Now, next one, let's see. So I think we have covered uh, this BNS. Okay, thank you Franklin uh, Aditya and everyone who is like saying that it is informative, Karthik, Saurabh, Pankaj, mm, thanks a lot for your comments, okay, mm, Imran, uh, CHR, okay, we can cover the CHR, HRs, Taking Analysis, HRV and PAT, Franklin, Canada and Bridge, okay, so let me take on Stock CHR. Guys, we will be ending our uh, session uh, in next 15 minutes, so we can discuss 15 more minutes because it will be one and a half hour, so we will not go longer than that. It's not advisable for the guys who are in different time zones. Okay, so we will have like next 15 minutes, so let's cover, I will take like three more stocks. So it will cover up like next 15 minutes. Okay, so. Um, CHR, CHR is like go same like with the AC. Okay, so it has the same pattern. If you can see the pattern, the stock trading here, here, this shape, this shape, this shape, it is similar to the shape of AC. Let's visualize the AC and then I'll come back up here again. Those who don't know, they can see the graph. Okay. If I remove these lines, it will be very easy for you to see. Same pattern. So it moves with the same pattern. The only difference is the price. The price of CHR is less. Can the stock is high. So CHR goes, these both stocks goes together. So uh, the only uh, different thing uh, in CHR is that it uh, it has a green candle. Otherwise everything is the same. If I can just zoom in. But also it is uh, at its resistance level. Same like CHR, uh, same like AC. So this one, or uh, I can draw it here. This one, red, and I can draw a channel, a resistance channel. This one. Okay, so this level of 3.84 to 3.9, this seems to be a resistance level for this. Uh, it has touched uh, like uh, made a higher of 3.8 and then it started falling down. So it did, uh, let's see what the RSI is saying. RSI is upward, this is upward, volumes are high. This seems to be in a little better shape than AC, not very much different, uh, but uh, a, a little better shape than AC. The reason is like it was able to sustain its opening price and gave a uh, closing above its opening price. So that's why we have a green candle. Also made a gap up opening, made a high uh, and then went down, but was able to sustain its opening price. Uh, maybe because of the huge supported volumes and uh, volumes are good. So we can expect this stock to either tra uh, to trade above or maybe at the same level in the next morning, but response will be a little bit more positive than Air Canada because of the factor that it was at least able to sustain its opening price. If the Air Canada goes down, the CHR will also go down because it will both impact go, uh, it both move in the same direction. So the resistance level is very near, but even if it goes down, it uh, goes up, uh, it will not make a very high jump because it has the resistance here, it have a resistance here. So in the longer run, it is you know, expected to go, go down. So if you find the stock uh, going down, then you have to wait a little till it goes to its support level of, let me draw a line here, blue. The support will be considered uh, here at, mm, this will not be a good support here at this point so you will find the stock 2.86 taking a support at this level based on the past trend because from here when you start falling down it stop here at this line so now here again if it stop falling down 
it can come down at 2.6 if you're planning to buy the stock just wait till it reaches around this 2.86 level and then you can enter in the trade okay and the rsi is above making showing a bullish nature mfd is fine uh, so but these are not the only thing that we need to consider while entering in a trade volumes are also good so it can we have like a few positive sessions but upside the reward is lesser as compared to the risk the downside is huge the downside is like you can see the downside from here 3.6 to 2.86 more than a dollar and the upside is like few cents from 3.72 to 3.8 like 10 12 cents or maximum 20 cents is the reward and more than a dollar is the risk so based on risk and reward ratio not advisable to enter wait for this stock to go down and then you can uh, enter this day those who already have this and if at any point of time on monday on tuesday you see the star it has started going down better to exit it and then you can buy again from 2.8 I hope that uh, it's sufficient for you to analyze this stock and now we can move on to the next one okay thank you guys for liking it we have a 12 likes still guys who haven't uh, liked the video and if they like this just press the like button to show and just your likeness and you see uh, to just to see how you are feeling out or, or feeling about this session and by the way this is the first ever session we are having and like we never had this session before this is the first time and let's see how it moves well and if it, if we have a like good response and people are liking it they really want to have these educational sessions then we can continue it we never planned it to be happen like this way it was just a, a random idea and then we started it so if there is a good response and people are liking it we, we will continue this and uh, let's uh, aim for our collective learning those guys who are not able to join we will have uh, uh, a video uploaded on the channel and you will be given the link in the group and you can you know uh, watch it on a later stage who have already watched it if you want just refresh something from the educational aspect for the first 20 uh, 25 minutes you can refresh that and those who are not able to join due to any reason they can also you know go back and see the recording okay uh, next we can take okay thank you Pankaj thank you for your response hopefully yes we will continue this because uh, I have a feeling that people are liking this and it is adding being value and adding knowledge to them because you know uh, what I see like in most of and guys so one important thing here is like we have to make it very very interactive it's not like only like I'll be speaking and you guys will be listening or something then it will be a very boring session believe me we have to make it interactive although you cannot speak this like uh, in the, uh, unlike the zoom where you can speak but on the zoom we have like some other things like everyone starts speaking together or something like that so here like uh, i feel it more better and uh, you have a chat box to say something your feelings you you know you your points your comments on that so let's make it uh, a classroom session rather than a, like a radio session like a, where only one guy is speaking and otherwise are just the listeners so you need to be very interactive ask questions if you want me to repeat something let me know and share your views if you have some knowledge you have you have some news about any stock or you are trading one stock and you think that it will go up and you have a reason to support this or you have uh, you came across some news or something and you want to share here uh, share it here feel free and it will help all of us to learn from that news or that aspect or any of the knowledge that you are going to share so uh, feel free to do this and let's make this an interactive where we both interact it's not only me that we're going to speak it for one and a half hour or so so we all have to you know participate in this and this will be beneficial for all of us so we will be uh, moving on to our next uh, one the next one we can take about haul how about haul okay let me take haul and then i can come back again to some of the stocks some of the list uh, stocks in the list i might have missed because they have gone up because the uh, the chat is on the other screen and i'm on the other screen if something goes up it can might have been missed if your stock has been missed you can comment here so that i can you know, have a look on that so you are about uh, hallmark financial services 
uh, Mozo, can you confirm this? In the meanwhile, I will be taking the other one. Please confirm me about this hall. Because we have similar names in the, you know, uh, Canadian and in the, uh, in the US market. So if you can write in brackets here, uh, you just talk the same name, it will be easy to identify. Okay. So what next to take? H I V E. I'm taking H I V E. Just H I V E. Which one? New York or T S X? I think it should be T S X. I will be commenting on the T S X. And okay. Point four dollar stock. A uh, cheaper one to buy. Okay, this seems to be really interesting because I'm just looking at uh, this uh, candlestick. The candlestick is a green. Okay, May it shows that the stock moved up and uh, downward price rejection. We call this candlestick that this the name of this candlestick is is like hammer. So this hammer, whenever this type of candlestick is formed, it shows a shift in the trend and that's actually an upward trend. So I will be telling you more about uh, the candlestick, how to read the candlestick in our next session. Next topic, education topic is the candlestick pattern where we see the names of this candle. Like the name of this candle is a doji, uh, doji candle. So this is a doji. So what it says, I will be telling you on this. And this is the hammer. Whenever the hammer is formed, it shows um, upward trend, a shift in the trend. And most likely it's, um, it's not likely, it is actually uh, upward trend. So from here we can see the upward trend and this analysis is purely based on the candlestick pattern so candlestick patterns i have not seen anything else yet on this uh, on this graph this is the first thing that caught my attention so this candlestick uh, shows that this is, uh, the stock can go up uh, from here so let's let me draw the line here upside is here or i can see here this is let me make a red resistance line and the support line here is you can see the stock taking support at this level support should be blue okay there's a support level so downside if i talk about the risk and reward ratio downside is 0.35 and the upside is 0.4445 means it's like 50 50 um, uh, one is to one ratio which is we consider like good new though it's neutral but considering building the other factors like the shape of this candle uh, risk reward uh, ratio seems to be positive because of the downward price rejection and it can go up so I think from this point of time, it is like about to change the trend. It can go up. Volumes are still below average, but uh, it has, you know, made uh, almost a double volume as compared to the previous two days sessions, a higher volume, if not double, like it's approximately like almost you can say like a, a huge volume supported by the volume and the shape of the candle. And now here it's interesting to see it is converging okay and if we see the next day session and next day session is positive you will see a crossover whenever there is a convergence it's not like convergence is always a negative impact to see convergence can also because it can also uh, you know uh, time to see that uh, it can be a crossover in the future so it has been converged and it can give you a crossover in the next session Okay, RSI is uh, in upward direction, but still, um, because since it is up uh, above 50, so it is positive, showing the stock is in upward move. And then uh, this one is a straight line, which is shows a neutral move. Still, it is neutral. Okay, RSI is neutral, but above 50, shows stock is in upward trend. Here, it is about to cross the um, signal line, shows like you can enter in this uh, stock. Downward price rejection, risk reward ratio 1 is to 1. Maximum that you can do is wait for just one more day to get a confirmation. The next day is also uh, positive and the candle is formed. The closing is above 0 0.4. Okay, then it will be considered as a, uh, you can say, as a confirmation 
one day confirmation always take at least one day confirmation so one there will be a one day confirmation then you can say okay yes the stock has already changed and uh, after that you will see the volumes will almost approach the or it can make not cross but it can approach the average volumes higher than the previous days the shape will go up and you can you know uh, see the crossover to here so this can be a good stock to watch on monday you can add it in your watch list and uh, because the price is also low most of the guys like they are interested in the low prices stock and i can think this this can be a stock where you can keep a watch and it can be a good buy in next uh, day or two okay so we'll be taking the last stock now because uh, the time is uh, like all we are almost there or to one and a half hour so this is the last stock coming up and uh, let's see how which stock to take in okay we can take in the last one that should be the last one let me pick up okay yes i think we i have put taken the right one okay the last one okay the last one okay i have not taken anything from abit so i will go with abit now because i uh, i have uh, like discussed few other stocks from you and other guys as well so let's go with abit uh, those stocks that are left over we can discuss in our next uh, sessions which will be probably at the same time uh, next one is lk okay uh, i have a question here okay from just okay okay just the next one the r2 r2 the resistance level 2 will be The resistance level two. The resistance level two. I cannot see here the image here resistance because this is only one. So we cannot consider the resistance. Let me go back here. Okay, yeah, this one I got it. Let me change the color to red. Okay, so the next resistance will be zero point five three. So you still have like room zero point four four. If it crosses four four, the next one you can see the immediate one will be. I think there is another here. Yes, this can be considered as a resistance before it moves to zero point five three. Man, not this one, or this one. It can be considered like it is almost the same zero point four five or the four four. It is almost the same. So uh, this one 0 0.53 before 53 you can see a resistance at 0 0.47. So we have 0 0.44 or 45 you can say this is channel channel 44 better to say 44 then 47 and then 53 will be the resistance levels for this stock. I hope that answers you. Okay just yes, now uh, I was taking that one of the stock uh, from Abid. LK, you can coffee. This is the last stock for today, and then we'll end up the session. You can coffee. Okay, yeah, here we go. You can coffee. By the way, guys, for the MACD, uh, it just came to my mind. In MACD, if the, uh, when you're using MACD and there is no volume in the stock, stock is, there is no trend, then don't use MACD because it is based on the past data if there is no past data there is no trend in the past data the stock is an illiquid stock most of the then there is normally no trading in that stock so don't use macd because it will not give you anything okay so here liquid coffee seems to be a good stock why because of this gap this there is a gap down whenever there is a gap the stock will come back to refill the gap so sooner or later always keep in mind whenever there is a gap whether there is a gap up or there is a gap down the stock will always you know finish that gap or close that gap so there, this is the gap here so currently it is trading at this level so eventually you can see in the very near future the stock will go to this 23.9924 it will you know uh, cover is, this gap which was created on in march yeah that's march so the stock will uh, you know cover this it's it may not be like going 
of course straight till here it will go till some point and then consolidate maybe take a little dip a little correction and then it will go up so eventually the target for guys who are holding this or who are planning to buy this stock that your eventual your first target should be 23.47 although it can show a resistance here if i can uh, tell you the resistance line let me take a backward look if there's any other resistance below this there is a small one but not too much to you know i can say it, it can it will be very weak because it's one or approximately touching two so let's not consider that so this one will be a strong resistance at this point 18 18 will be your first target if, if it crosses 18 then you will see the next resistance level at this point we can make it more clear yep so this point a 21.74 to 22 because we have some resistance here 18.21 is the first level and 21.74 is the next level of resistance so if it goes to 21.74 we can say eventually it has already closed its gap because it's like near its gap so from this point of 5 to 21.74 or you can say 22 so it will eventually cover its gap that's what i was talking about and the first level will be 18 so it can be good buy, a good buy in the long run and i'm not talking about what will happen in you know next day or two i'm talking about a little a longer period more than a week time so for the swing trade it's good okay let's talk about uh, the the candle it has formed uh, it has formed uh, you know uh, it had made a gap up opening but couldn't sustain its gap or opening level and made a downward move uh, the previous analysis which i made made this this was for over a week minimum a week time the weekly analysis not a daily one for the, for the daily perspective what we can see that it was not able to sustain its closing pri opening price and made a downward closing a price of 5.51 and open at little higher price made an upper week uh, but couldn't sustain so it was it seems that it is currently at its resistance level but this resistance is not a, uh, a strong resistance on a daily basis by the way this resistance was uh, this being discussed or 18.21 on the weekly grounds or a little a longer period so this resistance if we, i can see here currently this stock is at its daily resistance though this resistance is not very strong this is not considered as a strong resistance it can the stock can break this if it breaks this resistance you can see the stock eventually going to this level of 18 or if it doesn't then it will take a support uh, of this point 1.75 or even you can say yeah 1.75 it can take a support at 1.75 so downward from here if it gives a break then it will go be going up to 18 or if it takes uh, uh, if it doesn't breaks then it will take a support at 1.75 the downside is less as compared to the up um, upper uh, sorry upper side is there is no more upper side left here unless it just stock breaks gives the breaks out if it gives a breakout then you will see a huge room that it can eventually go up at 18 and 21 but on a daily time frame to watch this stock closely on monday if it is giving a breakout or if it's not giving a breakout if it's not giving a breakout then you can plan a buy of 1.75 and even if you buy at this like you're buying at 1.75 it is uh, it has got a room to go up okay so you can put it this stock in your buy list and the very good thing of this stock is like you see the macd the macd is like 30 it's like an oversold stock you, it's a it's good to buy this stock i think uh, that's a good one and this has uh, shown a crossover and upward crossover and the momentum is ever increasing the divergence is increasing macd is very highly positive rsi is also depicting a buy trend and a good stock to you know watch or just only thing here is like this one and that is like serious to note that it was not able to sustain its opening price and made a red candle and if it uh, gives a, on monday if it gives a closing price above this you can see this um, stock uh, like shooting up or uh, on the other side if it goes down then uh, make 
uh, a buy around 1.75 to 1.8 you can plan a buy okay i hope that uh, it answers your question and volume if we talk about the volume volume is a little low maybe because of the upside price rejection or the resistance that people were looking at so most of people didn't buy this stock on this day didn't i would rather to say uh, didn't trade it in this stock in the last session or next session it can be a good one but uh, this one is in the us most of the guys don't have the us access the, the guys who have access uh, the us market it's good stock to look into and that uh, closes our today's session and i hope you like this session for today and it would have increased your knowledge and at least you all those who already knew a few of the things it would be uh, like a good refresher for them and just comment uh, there and i would be happy to see your comments and would like to improve on if there's something of course there's always a room for improvement if there is something we need to add on and to work on that for our future sessions we will be happy to you know welcome your comments and your feedback yeah, and uh, if anything you want to share you can and if you like this video just press like button so it will be like something uh, a feedback for me so it will be motivating for me and thank you very much for today's time thanks for your session and sort of saying you heard the news of it being uh, delisted not sure what happened okay uh, if you're saying about something delisting uh, i have not heard any news on this and uh, when and by the whenever there is a news go with the news whatever the technical same because all technical analysis fail over the fundamental analysis and the news and everything fundamentals come on top and then a technical analysis you pick the stock on based on fundamentals and then you trade in based on the technicals and plan your trade accordingly based on the stock which you have already picked and if there is a news i keep on repeating this thing like if there is a news go with the news or technicals come to zero on the news so if there is a news guys go with the news okay so i think the guy abit you were asking about this go and check out if it this is mm, uh, like uh, really delisting or there is some bad news on this so that maybe because of that it has formed this sort of channel on the last session uh, you you can have a watch and thank you sort of for you know sharing this uh, information and that's what i keep on saying that if you have some information just share it for the benefit of all Mother, can you send me a separate video for support? I have not made it. Once we have this video, for sure we can. Okay, uh, we can do this. Mother Khan session was awesome. Thank you very much, Saurabh. Thanks for the knowledge session. Thanks, Saurabh. Thanks, Pankaj, Abed. Uh, yes, uh, risky to invest as they got notes of they got noticed. Okay, like be careful then. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today's session and uh, i hope to you know see a feedback from you and from comments and the likes and thank you very much and the next session i think now we have come to some sort of conclusion like uh, this today's time suits most of the guys and saturday we can plan all saturdays on the same time 11 mm, uh, 11 was in cuba so it was 2 p.m est that suits i think everyone unless uh, i get some response from you guys to change it otherwise we will be sticking to the same time and if everything goes well we can increase the number of sessions on the two days saturday sunday both because most of the guys you were saying that you're listing some of the stocks i was not able to you know pick all of them so whatever is left we can do on the next session but if you guys plan you are ready to join we can increase it on two sessions from uh, monday from saturday and sunday so tomorrow there will be no no session for tomorrow because it has not yet planned already so for the next saturday we you can just let me know if you want both on saturday on sunday then we can plan that so that we can strictly you know fix to that 1.5 hours and now it's all like almost 1.45 so we cannot you know go longer on this thank you very much thanks salim and have a nice day and enjoy your next trading session thank you and goodbye